Geography of Algeria Algeria comprises 2,381,741 square kilometers of land, more than four-fifths of which is desert. In northern Africa, between Morocco and Tunisia. It is the largest country in Africa. Its Arabic name, Al Jazair, derives from the name of the capital Algiers, after the small islands formerly found in its harbor. It has a long Mediterranean coastline, most of which is more properly termed the Albarant Sea, which is the westernmost element of the Mediterranean Sea. The northern portion, an area of mountains, valleys, and plateaus between the Mediterranean Sea and the Sahara Desert, forms an integral part of the section of North Africa known as the Maghreb. This area includes Morocco, Tunisia, and the northwestern portion of Libya known historically as Tripolitania. Land boundaries, total, border countries, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Tunisia, Western Sahara. Area, comparative, roughly 3.5 times the size of Texas and twice the size of Ontario. Coastline, maritime claims, exclusive fishing zone, territorial sea. Stretching from the Moroccan border the Tel Atlas, including the Jabel Babor Formation, is the dominant northwestern mountain range. Stretching more than 600 kilometers eastward from the Moroccan border, the high plateau area consists of undulating, step like plains lying between the Tel and Saharan Atlas ranges. The elevation averages between in elevation in the west, dropping to in the east. The climate is so dry that these plains are sometimes thought of as part of the Sahara. The plateau area is covered by alluvial debris formed when the mountains eroded. An occasional ridge projects through the alluvial cover to interrupt the monotony of the landscape. Higher and more continuous than the Tel Atlas, the Sahara Atlas range is formed of three massifs, the Xor range near the Moroccan border, the Amora range, and the Ouled Nile range south of Algiers. The mountains, which receive more rainfall than those of the high plateaus, include some good grazing land. Watercourses on the southern slopes of these massifs disappear into the desert but supply the wells of numerous oases along the northern edge of the desert, of which Biskra, Lagwat, and Bashar are the most prominent. Eastern Algeria consists of a massive area extensively dissected into mountains, plains, and basins. It differs from the western portion of the country in that its prominent topographic features do not parallel the coast. In its southern sector, the steep cliffs and long ridges of the Oris Mountains create an almost impenetrable refuge that has played an important part in the history of the Maghreb since Roman times. Near the northern coast, the Petit Kabylie Mountains are separated from the Grand Kabylie Range at the eastward limits of the Tel by the Summum River. The coast is predominantly mountainous in the far eastern part of the country, but limited plains provide hinterlands for the port cities of Bajaya, Skikta, and Anaba. In the interior of the region, Extensive high plains mark the region around Setif and Constantine. These plains were developed during the French colonial period as the principal centers of grain cultivation. Near Constantine, salt marshes offer seasonal grazing grounds to semi nomadic sheep herders. The Algerian portion of the Sahara extends south of the Saharan Atlas for to the Niger and Mali frontiers. The desert is another worldly place, scarcely considered an integral part of the country. Far from being covered wholly by sweeps of sand, However, it is a region of great diversity. Immense areas of sand dunes called Arig occupy about one quarter of the territory. The largest such region is the Grand Erg Oriental, where enormous dunes high are spaced about apart. Much of the remainder of the desert is covered by rocky platforms called Humud, and almost the entire southeastern quarter is taken up by the high, complex mass of the Ahagar and Tassili Najer highlands, some parts of which reach more than. Surrounding the Ahagar are sandstone plateaus cut into deep gorges by ancient rivers, and to the west a desert off pebbles stretches to the Mali frontier. The desert consists of readily distinguishable northern and southern sectors, the northern sector extending southward a little less than half the distance to the Niger and Mali frontiers. The north, less arid than the south, supports most of the few persons who live in the region and contains most of the desert's oases. Sand dunes are the most prominent features of this area's topography. But between the desert areas of the Grand Erg Oriental and the Grand Erg Occidental and extending north to the Atlas Sa'uryan are plateaus, including the Tatame and a complex limestone structure called the Mzab where the Mozabite Berbers have settled. The southern zone of the Sahara is almost totally arid and is inhabited only by the Tuareg nomads and, recently, by oil camp workers. Barren rock predominates, but in some parts of Ahagar and Tassili Najer alluvial deposits permit garden farming. Northern Algeria is in the temperate zone and enjoys a mild, Mediterranean climate. 
It lies within approximately the same latitudes as Southern California and has somewhat similar climatic conditions. Its broken topography, however, provides sharp local contrasts in both prevailing temperatures and incidence of rainfall. Year-to-year -year variations in climatic conditions are also common. This area, the most inhabited in Algeria, is commonly referred to as the Tel. In the Tel, temperatures in summer average between in and winter drop to. Winters are not cold, but the humidity is high and houses are seldom adequately heated. In eastern Algeria, the average temperatures are somewhat lower, and on the steppes of the high plateaus winter temperatures hover only a few degrees above freezing. A prominent feature of the climate in this region is the Sirocco, a dusty, choking south wind blowing off the desert, sometimes a gale force. This wind also occasionally reaches into the coastal tell. In Algeria only a relatively small corner of the Sahara lies across the Tropic of Cancer in the torrid zone, but even in winter, midday desert temperatures can be very hot. After sunset, however, the clear, dry air permits rapid loss of heat, and the nights are cool to chilly. Enormous daily ranges in temperature are recorded. Rainfall is fairly abundant along the coastal part of the Tell, ranging from annually. The amount of precipitation increasing from west to east. Precipitation is heaviest in the northern part of eastern Algeria, where it reaches as much as in some years. Farther inland, the rainfall is less plentiful. Prevailing winds that are easterly and northeasterly in summer change to westerly and northerly in winter and carry with them a general increase in precipitation from September to December, a decrease in the late winter and spring months, and a near absence of rainfall during the summer months. Clearing of land for agricultural use and cutting of timber over the centuries have severely reduced the once bountiful forest wealth. Forest fires have also taken their toll. In the higher and wetter portions of the Tel Atlas, cork oak and Aleppo pine grow in thick soils. At lower levels on thinner soils, drought resistant shrubs predominate. The grapevine is indigenous to the coastal lowlands, and grasses and scrub cover the high plateaus. On the Saharan Atlas, Little survives of the once extensive forests of Atlas cedar that have been exploited for fuel and timber since antiquity. The forest reserves in Algeria were severely reduced during the colonial period. In 1967 it was calculated that the country's forested area extended over no more than of terrain, of which were overgrown with brushwood and scrub. By contrast, woodlands in 1830 had covered. In the mid-1970s, however, the government embarked on a vast reforestation program to help control erosion, which was estimated to affect of arable land annually. Among projects was one to create a barrage vert more or less following the ridge line of the Saharan Atlas and extending from Morocco to the Tunisian frontier in the zone long and up to wide. The barrage vert consists principally of Aleppo pine, a species that can thrive in areas of scanty rainfall. It is designed to restore a damaged ecological balance and to halt the northern encroachment of the Sahara. By the early 1980s, the desert had already penetrated the hilly gap between the Saharan Atlas and the Oris Mountains as far as the town of Busada, a point well within the high plateaus region. The Barrage Bird project was ended in the late 1980s because of lack of funds. Natural resources, petroleum, natural gas, iron ore, phosphates, uranium, lead, zinc. Total renewable water resources. Freshwater withdrawal total, per capita. Natural hazards, mountainous areas subject to severe earthquakes, mudslides and floods in rainy season. Environment, current issues, soil erosion from overgrazing and other poor farming practices, desertification, dumping of raw sewage, petroleum refining wastes, and other industrial effluences leading to the pollution of rivers and coastal waters, Mediterranean Sea, in particular, becoming polluted from oil wastes, soil erosion, and fertilizer runoff. Inadequate supplies of potable water. Environment, International Agreements, Party 2, Biodiversity, Climate Change, Desertification, Endangered Species, Environmental Modification, Hazardous Wastes, Law of the Sea, Ozone Layer Protection, Ship Pollution, Wetlands Signed, but Not Ratified, Nuclear Test Ban. Algeria has a number of protected areas including national parks and nature reserves. An example of such a protected area is the Jebel Babor Nature Reserve within the Jebel Babor Mountains. The Jebel Babor is also one of the few relict habitats for the endangered Barbary macaque, Macacus sylvanus. The national parks in Algeria are Ahagar, Belezma, Kriya, Jerjura, El Kala, Guria, Dasili Najar, Taza, Theniat El Had, and Lemkin. 
Mountain, in elevation extremes points that are farther north, south, east or west than any other location. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.